along, Cassidy. With action and suspense, out of the Old West comes the most famous hero of them all, Hop Along Cassidy, starring William Boyd. The ring of the silver spurs heralds the most amazing man ever to ride the prairies of the early West, Hop Along Cassidy. This famous hero thrills his 60 million fans with action and dangerous adventure. In the role of Hop Along Cassidy is the popular star of the motion picture series, William Boyd. And now, another exciting story of the early West. Hoppy and the Iron Horse. The West of 1890 is a mighty rugged place. Folks who live in it are used to hardship, peaceful scenery, and dangerous living. Things they're not so used to are the newfangled inventions of the East. Inventions that are just beginning to creep west. Uh, we don't get to see a train very often. Sure looks good. Yep, just gliding along. Makes you wish you were sitting on them nice cushioned seats, not only... <laughs> You mean you aren't used to the feel of a saddle after spending a lifetime on one? I should have known you couldn't stand this long trip. Oh, what are you talking about, Hoppy? Why, I'm fresh as a daisy. I was only thinking how wore out you've been looking. I know. Well, we're not very far from Wheeler, and then we can both relax. Uh, this fellow we're going to see is working for the railroad, ain't he? Only the vice president of the line. Vice president? Doggone. Maybe he'll let me run one of them engines, huh? Heaven help the jackrabbits if he does. Mm -hmm. No, 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 you ain't inferring, Hoppy. Look, I... over there. Over where? That man's waving at us. Kind of a frantic wave. Uh, let's go see what he wants. Something we can do for you, mister? Do you know anything about poison? What? Poison? What kind? I don't know. Must have been in the water. My my wife's pretty sick. She in there? Yeah. I haven't known what to do. I, I couldn't leave her to ride into Wheeler. Ah, you better relax a little. Can't do her any good when you're this upset. I know. it. It's just that I'm responsible. Now let's see what we can do for her. California, take care of the horses, will you? Sure, Hoppy. Just outside, Jesse. I stopped this gentleman. He's going to help you. I hope he can. I feel sick enough to die. Oh, Jesse. Now, you're not dying, Mrs. Uh... Uh, Garvin. I'm Lee Garvin, and this is Jesse. Now, let's see. Uh, these your breakfast dishes? Well, yes. Well, don't think you have too much to worry about, then. Just a case of loco weed poisoning. I can smell it in the water. Loco weed? And it isn't deadly? No, but it can make you awfully sick. It certainly can. I think I can fix up something that'll help. Is there any hot water without local weed and some baking soda? Mm, yes, right here. We drew this water yesterday. That was before the local weed got in your well. We may as well get things straight, mister. That poison was put in our well. See. Hey. And if you're riding on the wheeler, mister, don't let anybody know you stopped at Lee Garvin. Because if you do, they'll suspect you and watch you and give you every kind of a raw deal. They might even try to kill you. Now back to Hopalong Cassidy and our story, Hoppy and the Iron Horse. Hoppy is greatly disturbed by his visit with Lee Garvin and his wife, who seem to be living in a terrible kind of fear. Hoppy can't forget them as he and California ride on into the rail yard at Wheeler. Though well past sundown, they find Tom Smith still in his office. Tom has been anxiously awaiting Hoppy, and he too seems to have a pretty big problem on his hands. Those are the complete reports, Hoppy. There have been a series of accidents, and it seems they've all been directed at me. I still don't see what that has to do with your son-in-law. Well, it's a terrible thing to have to say, Happy. But everyone we're close by. He's a brakeman here in the line. 
Well, that's where Jesse met him. Jesse? Yes. Her name's Garvin now. And her husband is Lee Garvin. Yeah. Hmm. He didn't seem like that kind of a boy to me. Oh. You know him? Just met him on my way on the wheeler. Why would he want to injure you? Why, because I'm a rich man. He knows that Jesse's going to get out of all when I die. Oh, you must be mistaken, Tom. Besides, how did you get so rich? I didn't have no, know there's so much money in railroading. Well, there isn't, actually. I bought a piece of Oklahoma land last year. Turned out to be in the middle of a new oil field. So you told Jesse about it? No, not a word. I didn't tell anybody. But on the night after I got the news and the letter from the oil company, I was awakened by a noise here in my office. By the time I got my gun and tiptoed in, he was gone. Well, Roberts was too late to see him also. Your secretary? Yeah. The noise had awakened us both. Whoever he was, he was more interested in my mail than in the robbery. The cash box was still locked. I feel sure it was Garvin. He was spying on me. Then I only have one suggestion. Hmm, what's that? I think you'd better arrange for two men to go to work here. I knew I could depend on you, Hoppy. <laughs> if you'll take the job as storekeeper, you'll be at a spot where you'll hear all the grapevine gossip. Hoppy. Hoppy, I'm on an important errand for Banks, the yardmaster. The 552 is clean out of red signal oil. No. Red, eh? Yep. Well, now, this stock is still kind of new to me. I know where the green is. Oh, you can see you don't know much about railroading, Hoppy. A train's got to have red lights, too, you know. Yeah. Seems to me I heard one of the boys say that if you mix a bucket of steam with that green signal oil, it'll turn red. You don't say. Yeah. Here's a bucket. You go get the steam out of that engine over on track two. Oh, but that fella Banks, the, the yardmaster, he told me to stay away from the engines. Just tell him what you're doing. He'll understand. I guess he will at that. The 552's got to have red lights. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Say, your uh, friend's getting along fine, Mr. Cassidy. Oh, sure. California can take care of himself. What can I do for you, Mr. Roberts? Oh, nothing. Nothing at all. I, uh, I just uh, dropped in to chat. <laughs> Matter of fact is, uh, I, I I wanted to warn you. Oh? Well, uh, speaking not as uh, Mr. Smith's secretary, but as uh, as Lee Garvin's friend, I, I wanted to, to tell you that Lee is pretty riled up. I heard him out there talking to Banks a minute ago. What about? Well, Lee found out that you and Mr. Smith are friends. Uh, says you didn't tell him when you stopped by his cabin. He's, uh, he's pretty touchy, you know. I'm beginning to learn. Let's see if we can't calm him down. Oh, it l looks like we're a little late for that, Mr. Cassidy. Don't break one. Swing on me, will you? All I hear from you are dirty impetus, and I'm tired of it. Hold on. What's this all about? I don't know. Lee Garvin waded into me. I'll tell you what it's about, Cassidy. I just don't like being spied on. What have you got to hide? Nothing. Then you have nothing to be worried about. Did I see a scuffle going on here? No trouble, Tom. Lee and I were just roughhousing a chief. There's been too much like a discipline around here lately, Banks. As yard master, this sort of thing doesn't become you. Yes, sir. That goes for you, too, Lee. Don't think you can take advantage of our relationship. Don't worry. I'm not any prouder of it than you are. Too bad that boy is so hot-headed. I can't help liking him. Huh. I thought you were a good judge of men. Well, I guess I'd better get back to the storeroom. Yes, and I want to check over next month's order list. I still think something can be worked out, Tom, if Jesse loves him. She's infatuated with him. Tom, he'll never... Look out! Say, well, you wouldn't jerk me out of the way, Hoppy. I, I'd be under the wheels of that baggage truck now. Yeah, it was rolling pretty fast. Someone started that truck rolling toward me. Looks that way, Tom. What happened? What happened, Chief? Uh, I heard a crash. Roberts, did you see Lee Garvin touch that baggage truck? Uh, well, speak up. Don't try to shield him this time. Well, Chief, he, he was leaning against it when I walked away. But I know if he started it rolling, uh, it was an accident. Uh, 
Gray Gully, they sure pulled in the sidewalks at 9 o'clock in this here little burg. Yeah. Well, the whole town is railroad folks, and they keep early hours. Man needs his rest when he works hard. Yep. Yeah. Hey, remember that there song, Casey Jones? Casey Jones sitting at the throttle. Casey Jones. Wait a minute. You want to give him nightmares? <laughs> hey. Hey. Hey, you silly guy running around there in light, huh? No. He generally goes right home after work. Oh, yeah? <laughs> Good little boy. <laughs> See, I could tell you... <laughs> Well, look, if you see him, you just tell him the Ben Watts to look at him. Uh, ben Watts. Hey, Hoppy, didn't I see that hobo around the yards earlier today? Yeah, riding the rod through town, I guess. I wonder what he wants with me. I'm a little curious myself. Look, hmm? They just met over there in front of the saloon. Yeah, that, that is Lee, isn't it? Hoppy, do you see what I see? Uh-huh. That's a mighty big roll of bills that Lee's giving him. Now that hobo's urging him to go in the saloon. Dog, go on, why can't that boy stop acting like this? Well, looks like this is the night for activity. That horse is really pounding the trail. No wonder who's coming. Mr. Cassidy. Well, if it isn't Mrs. Garvin, must be feeling better. Oh, I'm fine now. Just worried. You? Well, what about, ma'am? I'm afraid something's happened to Lee. He didn't come home to supper. Well, he... Uh, uh, I, well, he can take care of himself. You know railroaders don't worry about mealtimes. Then you think nothing's happened? Of course not. Oh, I, I suppose I'm silly to worry. There, uh, There's just one thing I've been concerned about, Mrs. Garvin. I know it's none of my business, but... Go on. When you met Lee, uh, were you engaged to somebody else? Anybody who'd be liable to make trouble? Why, no. I was never engaged to anyone but Lee. Not to Harmon Roberts? Certainly not. Harmon's always been a good friend, and he likes Lee a lot. Oh, Lee, I've been worried about you. Hello, Lee. I thought I told you to keep out of my business, Cassidy. Lee, please. Mr. Cassidy's trying to help. That's right. Take the other person's side. I'm always wrong. Well, you are this time. Why do you put up with me? Why don't you go back to your father? Then you'll all be happy. That's a wonderful idea. Good night. Goodbye. Well, there they go, California. Yeah, in opposite directions. Dad, it's all over between Lee and myself. Oh, what is that good for nothing done to you now? Doesn't matter, Dad. I'm here with you now. There, there now, honey. Uh, why don't you go climb in your little old bed and have a good sleep? Uh, we'll talk things over in the morning. All right, Dad. I'm going to check over some figures. Won't take me long, though. And I'll be right here at my desk if you want anything. Night, Dad. Night, honey. Sleep well. West. Yeah. 958, to Hop Along Cassidy and our story, Hoppy and the Iron Horse. Tom Smith is overwrought by the threatening series of accidents that have occurred since his daughter married Lee Garvin. Seated at his desk, he made a perfect target for one mysterious killer outside his window. Somebody took a shot at the chief through the window. Did you hear that? Tom Smith was shot. Oh, what's happening? Who was it? Hurt bad. I, 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 I don't think so. I, I'm going after the doctor and Constable Reardon. A little trouble here? Oh, Mr. Cassidy, I'm glad you're here. M Mr. Smith's been wounded. Wounded? Hey, look here. 
On the ground beside the window. What? What is it, Banks? The phone could not hurt you. Looks like the fellow who fired at the old man dropped it. Say, I, I, I've seen that somewhere before. Yeah, I remember seeing a hobo around the yard. He was wearing one of these things around his neck. That's it. That's it. I remember now. Did anybody see him this evening? Did you, Cassidy? I've uh, I've been in my room all evening. I haven't seen anybody. Well, I saw him this evening. He was down on Main Street talking... Talking with... to who, Roberts? Well, it looked like Lee. What am I going to do? They're throwing everything at me, everybody. I rode out here to try to help you, Lee, but you'll have to trust me. I... I'll try. Now, we haven't much time. Where is this hobo Watts? I don't know. I left him in the saloon. Why did you give him money? Well, to... To keep him quiet about something. It couldn't be, uh, prison. Why... All right. I'm a jailbird. Did Watts follow you here to Wheeler? No, just my usual luck. He was riding a freight through. Stopped off when he saw I was good for some easy dough. Hoppy! Hoppy, it's the constable! Right, California. Here, Lee. Get behind this. Yeah. Luck we may be able to keep him from searching the cabin. Lee left his pipe burning. Quick, California, in your mouth. Hmm? Oh, Hoppy! Oh. Lee Garvin, it's the law. Hello, Constable. You're late. Oh, Lee's gone, eh? Uh, my partner and I thought we'd wait around. He might come back. Well, I appreciate it, Cassidy. Oh, hi, California. <laughs> Never felt <coughs> bit better. Well, maybe I better look around the cabin while I'm here. Oh, I'll never last. Oh, we've searched it clear through, Constable. Hey, California, you don't look so good. I guess you ain't used to excitement. That ain't all I ain't used to. Well, I'll get back to town. So long, Constable. So long, Happy. I'm proud of you, California. Nobody'd ever suspect that you weren't used to smoking a pipe. Uh, nobody except me. <laughs> I've searched every inch of this yard, California. That hobo watch just isn't in it. There's only one place left. That outgoing freight? Yeah. I already checked the first five cars. Good. I'll go to the rear of the train. You cover these next ones. All right. Clear 537. Bring that truck around here. Come on, you men. Yeah, Let's load her up. All right, you guys. Come on. Hello, what? Huh? So you have a gondola car all to yourself. Don't move. Hey, I didn't shoot anybody. That wasn't my gun. They're lying. Who's lying? Oh. Watts. Watts, who's lying? Are you all right, Cassidy? Roberts. Right with you, Cassidy. As soon as I climbed down off this freight car. Hey, fellas, we, we, we found the hobo. Watts, Watts, who's lying? Over here, in this gondola car. They found the hobo. Oh, I'm glad you cornered him, Cassidy. Why did you shoot him, Roberts? Why, uh, I saw him pull a gun on you. What are you talking about? He didn't even have one. Yeah, here's a gun. Under him. I see, Banks. Keep it for the coroner. Let him decide whose gun it is. I don't like your attitude, Cassidy. I am sorry I bothered to help you. I'm not too happy about it myself. See you later. Robert, come close here. Watch is trying to say something. Yeah? Is it a confession? Well, you better listen close, Banks. He might have something very Hoppy! Important. Hoppy! Something happening? I'll say something's happening. There's a dead man in that car. But according to Banks and Roberts, he's still talking. Hello, Mr. Smith. Lee. Mr. Cassidy said you were willing to talk with me. So you decided to come here after all. I appreciate you seeing me. I thought I'd better tell you some things. Well, start by telling me why you sent your old cellmate Watts here to shoot me last night. But I didn't. That's a cooked-up story. And uh, so is the one about your jail term, I suppose. That part's true. 
But I had nothing to do with the shooting. I'll take a dying man's word. You mean Watts? Of course. He confessed before he died. He told them all about your... He told who? Why, he told... Uh, Robert, why did you do that? Well, uh, he was reaching for a gun, wasn't he? Why, no, he wasn't. Well, <laughs> I'm sorry, Chief. I, I slipped in to see that you were all right. I guess I'm just on edge. It's my mistake. Oh, I should think so. I told you I wouldn't need any help. I have my own gun handy. In in your desk drawer? Why, yes. Uh, is it uh, loaded? Of course it's loaded. Roberts, what are you doing? Roberts, turn that gun away. Are you insane? <laughs> Not at all, Chief. Uh, you see, it uh, it all works out nicely. <laughs> when the constable gets here, he'll see that Lee came here and threatened you. <laughs> so you drew this gun, he grabbed it and killed you. <laughs> Just like this. <laughs> Now back to Hop Along Cassidy. I found this note from Lee, Mr. Cassidy. He he wants me to know that he didn't shoot Dad, but he can't prove it, so he's got to stay hidden. But... But, uh... He wants me to remember that I'm still his wife, and he'll never give me up. Why are you going east? I... I have to. Dad didn't leave me any money. But your father owned a controlling interest in the railroad. He used to. Had to sell all his stock a year ago. Harmon Roberts showed me the transfer. Roberts bought the stock? To help Dad out. Seems he had a little nest egg. What about the oil land your father owned? Oil land? Oh, you must be mistaken. I'm afraid you're the one who's mistaken, Jesse. Well, I don't know what you're inferring, Mr. Cassidy. But Harmon Roberts knows much more about my father's affairs than anyone else could. I'm sure of that. Tarnation, are we riding up this trail for... Ain't we seen enough trouble already? Who says we're heading for trouble? That's the only thing that ever makes you ride this way. This is the turnoff. To the old Dolomite mine? Well, oh, it's deserted. Maybe not completely. Right around to the open shaft. Lee? Lee Garvin? Lee here? Oh, you're plum crazy, Hoppy. I've got you covered, Cassidy. Oh, oh, maybe I'm crazy. Lee, we want to talk to you. How did you know where to find me? That note you left Jesse... She apparently didn't notice, but you put the uh, rail code number on this mine on it, didn't you? Where is Jessie? She's leaving. Roberts has convinced her that her father left her penniless, so he's taking her east. Roberts, I'll stop that. You can't do it alone. You'll help me? Come on, trains don't wait. that switch, California, but wait till it's too late for the engineer to stop on the main track. Roberts is going to be surprised. I feel like Jesse James, derailing trains. He'll just go on this siding. Get ready. Now. Of this. Hello, Constable. Sorry to stop you, but I wanted to turn Lee Garvin over to you. What? Cassidy of all the dirty double crosses. Well, well, so you caught the killer. I'm about to, Roberts, any minute. Uh, hold out your wrist, Lee. Wait a minute, Constable. I turned Lee Garvin over to you for protection. This is your man here. Uh, uh, what? Put the bracelets on Harmon Roberts. Uh, why, are you insane? I thought Lee. Put was... Roberts under arrest for forgery and the murder of Tom Smith. Banks has just signed a full confession. My lies! Lies! Everybody knows that Garvin is... It's all there in the confession, Roberts. Banks' confession. The game's up. Ah, oh, that dirty rat. He can't get away by putting it all on me. Well, I tell you... I'll be hornswoggled. More darn things happen. Ain't even sure who to put the bracelets on. This is your man, and here's the confession. Oh, I'll fix that double-crossing bank. Come, 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 come on, come on, Roberts. Come on, come You sure gave me a start, Mr. Cassidy. I had to, Lee. But it's all cleaned up now. I sure want to thank you. Oh, stop wasting time talking to me. Can't you see that's the vice president's special car there? And there's somebody waving through the window to you? Yeah. Yeah, there is. See you later. Jesse! Now, can we get heading for the bar 20, Hoppy? Hey, Cassidy, Cassidy! 
Deputy, you gave me the wrong paper. This ain't no confession to banks. This is a bill of sale for 200 cows. Yeah. <laughs> the only paper I had on me. It's a mighty old gag, isn't it, Constable? Huh? Oh, I knew you weren't taken in. Not by an old trick like that. Funny, isn't it? Got whiskers all over it, but it works every time. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it works every time. <laughs> yeah. And so an exciting adventure ends for Hoppy in California. They'll get back to the bar 20 just about roundup time and settle down to a peaceful ranch life. But we've a hankering it won't last for very long. Somewhere there'll be trouble, and that's when Hoppy will ride out into another dangerous escapade. Hop Along Cassidy, starring William Boyd, is transcribed and produced in the West by Walter White, Jr. Hoppy and the Iron Horse was written by Tom Shirley. All stories are based upon the characters created by Clarence E. Mulford. This is a Commodore production. <laughs> <laughs> 